Hello and welcome to Megawatt, where each week we give you the lowdown on the latest piece of kit from the world of technology and gadgets. This week we've come to number 10, Great Pulteney Street, Nokia's design studio in London, to find out what they believe is the future of the mobile phone. Plus, the usual news, reviews, tips, tricks and much more. Stay tuned. We're here with Rhys Newman, a designer from Nokia's Advanced Strategic Design Project. Basically, they're the really clever people in Nokia who are coming up with the future thinking, next-gen development ideas. What have you got to show us, Rhys? Uh, well, this morning, uh, we've been presenting a project called Homegrown. Okay. And um, part of Homegrown, you might have seen before, uh, our CEO, OPK, presented uh, the Nokia Remade concept uh, in February in Barcelona. Right. And that was a phone uh, designed 100% out of recycled material. So it's, it's, it's rubbish, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, but it's beautiful rubbish. It's made okay. from waste. So when you say made out of recycled products, recycled old Nokias, or is it, could it be? Could be anything. Anything like, you know, milk anything. floats, so, milk bottles and things like that? Well, or? for this one, the proposal is maybe recycled aluminium cans, rubber tires, uh, G developing uh, recycled plastics. And so for this one, it's al primarily aluminium. There's an interesting thing that apparently 70% of all the aluminium ever extracted out of the ground is still in circulation, so it's a good thing to right. use recycled aluminium. Cool. So that's our proposal for that one. So that was one part of the right. homegrown project. Okay. And as I said, the homegrown project was many things. And, and so what we wanted to do was try and look at the way that we could deal with the environmental and sustainable issues, but do small changes. So small changes times by a big number can have big impact. And so one of the things we've done is a zero waste charger. Because what we found is that uh, most chargers, when they're left plugged into the wall, they draw 300 milliwatts of power. Okay. Most people leave them plugged in all yeah, the time. Yeah, I mean, I sort of plug my phone in when I go to bed, and That's then right. in the morning it's fully charged. And you probably sleep about 12 hours a night. Well, I've, I've got kids, but yeah, I'd like to sleep. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so I sleep four or five hours like <laughs> sure. you do. Um, but we found that most of our phones take about an hour to charge, and so there's just a contradiction. So there's a billion chargers out there, potentially. And so what we've done very, very simply is put a switch on the charger. So you can turn it off? You can turn it off. That's and so <laughs> you turn it on to charge the phone, and then it doesn't draw any power. So could you have it in a situation where you put it in and then it tells it that it's charged and turns it off? Well, this is one way of doing it. So for this one, you just plug it in. It doesn't draw any power until you push the button. When the phone's charged, then you unplug it. And so the idea was to build a prototype to see whether we could actually change our behavior for the charging. So that was a zero waste charger. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, the next one. So if you take, like, if you put, take good environmental and sustainable principles at the top of your design list, sure. it starts to affect the decisions you make. Uh, another alternative is maybe just to keep things longer. And so our proposition is not to create a phone that knocks you for 30 years, but to actually say what would happen if you did actually design a product that somebody could keep for 30 years. Right. Because we found now that you know every people generally change their phones every 17 months. Right, when your contract runs out, it's a case Absolutely, of, yeah. would you like a new phone? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that annoying man on the end of the phone. But we think potentially the market's mature enough now, and in terms of like core applications, core telephony, you know, just making calls, sending text messages, taking a picture, there's a point that maybe people just want to make this wise investment to say, I don't need anything more. I just want to have a product and it does the same thing and it's going to do the same thing for the next 15 years. So rather much like a watch. Yes. You know, a very well-made watch you'd keep yeah. for 50 odd years. Absolutely. You know, rather than a sort of, you know, very cheap watch which you'd probably use, yeah. you know, use in and use out. Yeah, and we're not suggesting that all products the Nokia make is disruptive. When we present this internally, there's obviously a few raised eyebrows, but it's exactly that. It's about providing choice. So the, if the watch market and the pen market can support the idea of somebody paying like $300 for a Mont Blanc pen and then also still using a bit crystal biro, there's potentially an opportunity for Nokia to sell something that's more enduring. Brilliant. And what's that one called? Uh, wearing Not Out. Wearing Not Out. Love it. Yeah. Love it. And so what's the final device you've got there? It looks the quite last intriguing. One, um, the interesting thing, when you start to talk about environmental and sustainable issues and the scale of Nokia, if you keep talking about it, you start to end up talking about big ethical and societal issues. And so once you look at this big scale, you start to change the people that you think you're designing for. And we 
in the research that we've done, we just go like one in five people are, on the planet are illiterate. Um, but they're not stupid, they're not innumerate, they still like to make calls, they still have family, they still have the motivation to communicate. So we set ourselves the task that not to design a phone for illiterate people, but just with a question to say, if you design a phone with, for uh, illiteracy in mind, right. can you define a UI that maybe would apply to everybody? And so what we've done is we did started designing from the inside out with this phone, so we designed the UI first. And we based it on what we call like human fundamentals. Right. And we tried to think of things that maybe would be general and applicable to everyone. Like um, a smile. Like a smile, for example. Yeah, or teenage angst. Right. Yes. And we think a list is universal. We also think that the way that people think and feel in communication, you always think about the person and their face. Uh, so we've done a list that's time-based, because times are universal, right. and faces. So there's no applications. In some parts of the world, applications are meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. Um, so we, at the top of the list will be today. At the bottom of the list will be the past. And everywhere in between, it's just incremental of that. And the idea is to have a phone that just navigates up and down. And primarily, you'll see the faces of the people you've communicated with. And there's some details in terms of we're not using, you know, Nokia supports 80 of the most common spoken languages on Earth. We, we make 55, I think, key map variations right. to these languages. The key maps are probably one of the nastiest things for us. And so the opportunity using touch technology, using display technologies, to actually have a product where it's not defined by the language and it's accessible to everyone. So that's the people first. Excellent. And so these are all wonderful ideas, yes. but are we actually likely to ever see them in the sort of flesh in the, in the high street? Or is it one of those, wow, this would be lovely, but won't happen? Yes, I hope so. Uh, we've seen small parts, but it would be nice. But we just have to make sure that we do it right and we do it. Excellent. Uh, value. Well, thanks very much for showing us the models. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for your time. Nice to meet you. Cheers. Cheers. So we've come to the UK launch of the Moto Z10 from Motorola and we're hoping to have a chat with Graham from Motorola who is sure to give us all of the insight onto the best features of the phone and we'll get our grubby mitts on the phone as well, so stay tuned. So in my hand I have the Moto Z10 which is the latest from Motorola. It was actually launched at CES but this is the UK launch here today in London. So this is HSDPA, um, main features are the 3.2 megapixel camera and a whole host of editing tools including red eye reduction. But the big thing with this kick slider is the video editing tools. So basically you can shoot your video you can tinker with it, so make sure you get the key moment when your friend falls over and makes an idiot of themselves. And then you can load it up straight away from the phone onto, for example, YouTube. And they've also got the same facilities for photos, so if you want to get a photo up onto Facebook straight away, you can do it direct from the phone. All you have to do is register with the website, put in your logins, and it's all done. The other thing that is definitely, definitely worth a mention, and perhaps only because I'm a girl, is that all three of the Bourne movies are already preloaded onto the phone. All three, so lots and lots of movies for you to watch. So this is the Moto Z10 from Motorola, and it's launched in the UK today. So I'm here at the London launch of the Moto Z10 from Motorola, and Graham from Motorola has very kindly agreed to have a chat with us about the new phone. So Graham, it's replacing the Z8. It is a follow-on to the Z8, Fo yes. Follow-on to the Z8. What's the new features? What should we okay. be getting excited about? First of all, a lot of people didn't like the look of the Z8. So this time around, you've got a more expensive look in the metallic finish, mm -hmm. okay? The camera has been improved. So we now have a 3.2 instead of the two megapixel previously. Best thing at all about the phone though, has got to be the ability to shoot the film, edit the film, and upload it straight away using Shozu to your favorite websites such as YouTube, Facebook, Flickr. So really cool, because a lot of people now go out, do something and then it may be two, three days till they get on their PC mm -hmm. before they've uploaded it. Here you've got the opportunity to do it on the phone. Within 20 minutes, half hour, it's on the web for them to share. But you can also obviously store things on the phone. What, what sort of memory are we talking okay, about? Okay, so it's got a 50 megabyte memory built into the phone. Okay. The current largest in the UK memory card that it will take is eight gigabytes. Mm -hmm. It's future-proofed up to 32 gigabytes. And what, what sort of memory card are we talking about? 
32 gig, uh, micro SD, sorry. Mi micro SD. The high capacity version from SanDisk. Okay, cool. And when's the um, when's phone actually available in the UK? It's available now in O2. Uh, later in May, it'll be available from Carphone Warehouse. Okay, fantastic. And prices? Go to your local retailer and have a look. Go to O2 and have a look. Exactly. Okay, fantastic. Well, thanks ever so much no for your time. That's it for this week. We hope you've enjoyed the show. In the meantime, why not check out my daily news show on Megawatt? And if you're watching this on a podcast, why not visit www.megawatt.tv where you can also see the episodes in the past and everything else from quick reviews through to what we love and what we hate from the world of technology and gadgets. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.